Hi, welcome to Think Pieces, and today we're going to be talking about the disrespect against Hobie Brown. Let's get into it. Hobie Brown, aka Spider-Punk. Some of us know him from the comics, and some of us know him from across the Spider-Verse. He notoriously isn't a role model, was briefly a runway model, hates the AM, hates the PM, hates labels, and hates being called a hero, because calling yourself a hero makes you a self-mythologizing, narcissistic autocrat. Yeah. All of those things. And the way that some people have been talking about him across the internet ever since Across the Spider-Verse dropped has unsurprisingly been anti-black. Cause anti-blackness just makes the fucking world go around for some reason. POC unity is a myth, but anti-blackness ties every race together. It is wild to see. Cause tell me why I was on Twitter, and first one sec, I know, but tell me why I was on Twitter and I see this post where Pavita has all these hygiene products, right? But then you hop over to Hobby and he has a 13-in-1 shampoo bottle for some reason. Like, what is this? It's like y'all niggas didn't even watch the movie. Pavita literally said that he doesn't even put shit in his hair for real. He uses coconut oil and genetics. Like, did, did, did y'all not watch the fucking movie? Look, I know some of y'all didn't pay to go to the theater to see this movie. I know you've been seeing it off a of camera rip off some fucking illegal websites. I know, I know, no, 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 I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and shit like this is just so egregious and anti-black to me. Cause you look at Hobie's hair and like, look at it. Like there's no length, there's no build up, there's no dandruff. Like I know bro watches his hair every two weeks, gets a detox once a year, oils his hair on the regular, uses rose water, uses the fucking rose water spray bottle on the regular. Like come on now. But y'all wouldn't know that. Cause one, you're not black. And two, it's just easier to look at someone like Hobie's hair and just automatically assume, oh, oh, it must be dirty. Oh, he must be unkept, right? Cause yeah, right? Like honestly, if you wanted this to be more accurate, flip the image, put Hobie on top, right? Put Pavita at the bottom, remove Pavita entirely, and then bring in Peter B. Parker and put him at the bottom of this image. Cause I know damn well that nigga uses a 13 in one shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, mouthwash, deodorant, peanut butter getter. I know that nigga uses this bottle. <laughs> Y'all can't sit up here and tell me or or convince me that when he broke up with Mary Jane that he wasn't using that bottle consistently, daily, hourly, you feel me? And yeah, I forgot to mention this, but I can make a whole video alone on how Bavita gets treated. Cause I know 2 plus 2 is 4 and Pop plus 5 is 10. What the fuck is this? Like, I'm gonna need y'all to get educated when it comes to freeforms and wicks. Stat! Immediately! Expeditiously! Now! <laughs> Cause our shit ain't dirty, our shit ain't unkept, nigga, or like fucking unprofessional, right? Like, no, we actually do wash our hair. Emphasis on wash, people don't think we wash our hair for some, some odd reason. Like, Hobie's hair defies gravity and it's fucking amazing. He's a good looking nigga, like what is y'all talking about? And it really is that bad when it comes to Hobie sometimes, cause you'll have people say like, oh, I'm being so serious when I say, I don't think I've ever seen a prettier character design than Hobie's. Like, he's just beautiful, look at him. And a post like this, you have people in the quotes calling him dirty, unkept, ugly, like pe people, people, some people think this post is satire. It's like, what? Like, me thinks when it comes to black characters, y'all just lose y'all everlasting minds, honestly. Cause how was a nigga that was briefly a runway model, dirty, unkept, unprofessional, and ugly? Like, y'all, y'all are so, ooh, y'all are so unserious, I hate y'all. Like, I think showing people a picture of Hobie Brown is a great litmus test to see who hates black people and who doesn't. It's just like the 1978 Wiz movie. Like, I swear to God, whenever I see people say that they don't like or hate that movie, I just automatically assume that you hate black people and excellent set designs. Cause ain't no way, ain't, ain't no way, dog. Also, I wanted to talk about something that Clay Rules mentioned on TikTok, which is that some of y'all love Hobie, but hate the people that are just like him IRL. And y'all can only consume anti-capitalist rhetoric and niggas speaking real when it comes from an entertainment medium like Across the Spider-Verse. Like, I promise, bro, I promise y'all, if Hobie started a TikTok account right now and started dropping knowledge right now, niggas would hit him with, oh, L take, uh, uh you, you're pandering, uh, you're reaching, all that. And then he'd probably get his account deleted in like a year. <laughs> but it's not all about when it comes to hobby, because something that arguably some mentioned on TikTok is that 
Hoppy was like the best representation of punks that she's ever seen in media. Cause usually anarcho communists like Hobie are just showing as, as utter fucking dickheads that you can't relate to that never help out the people somehow, which is not what they do, right? And the way that across the Spider-Verse portrayed him, he was super helpful. I mean like he was he was one of the only people that helped out Miles, told him to use your palms, don't use the fingertips, use your palms. Got him out of that situation when he when he was fucking contained, right? Told him, hey, uh, you know you can make your own watch, right? Like told him what the what the hell was really going on? Told, told him told him to pay attention to what you're really fighting. Like what? That like come on. Like Hobie is really the go, and people are recognizing this, and there are some good intentions behind what people are doing with Hobie. Now, when it comes to some of the artists that are trying to draw Hobie, like <laughs> let me just say, like I look, some of y'all have good intentions. I can tell, but. God damn, y'all niggas don't know how to draw black people. <laughs> no, 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 cause like, cause like, the way y'all draw him, it's like, some of y'all draw him fine, but when it comes to the hair specifically, like, you, you draw them like rectangles. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen, like, this is exactly how y'all draw him sometimes. And it's just, <laughs> like, every time I see that, every time I see, like, an animation or, 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 or a fucking picture of Hobie across my TL with the, with, with the fucking rectangles for Wix, I just <sighs> let out that deep Negro spiritual sigh and keep scrolling because I don't, I don't got time, man. I don't, uh. So this is really a PSA to all the artists or, or really anyone trying to draw Hobie. I'm going to drop the tutorials on how to draw him and insert correctly by JLS underscore lab on TikTok. To all the people who want to know how to draw Hobie correctly, pay attention. Peep. I, no, I need y'all to peep because if I get one more fucking Hobie with, with fucking rectangle freeforms, rectangle wicks across my TL, I'm going to lose my mind, bro. <laughs> Y'all, it's starting to get to me. Spider-Verse artists, I love you bad. I love you so much. Specifically, my Hobie artists, love y'all down. However, y'all need a tutorial for wigs. My God. I won't show any examples personally of what I think are like bad wigs because artists are learning every day. And I don't believe in critiquing artists when they don't ask for it because then it just feels like rude, unsolicited advice. Anyway, let's get into it. The biggest problem that I see when I see people draw Hobie's wigs is that y'all love consistency, which is not a good thing. At least not in this context. I'm seeing a lot of this shape when y'all are doing his wigs. This like consistent, like rectangular shape, which is not the shape of wigs. And I get it, sometimes it's stylized, but you can still stylize it and make it look like black people's hair. Like black people get that excuse all the time. Oh, but it's stylized. Do that to your white characters then. How come I'm only seeing your black characters in your style? That's an argument for another day. Anyway, this is also a bad example because I did this so fast, but also I see people making his locks all the same size and all the same shape. So he's got a head full of this literally all the way around. This, not right. Hobie's wicks looks like they're free formed, which means there's gonna be a lot of variety in the shapes and sizes of his wicks. It's gonna look a lot more like this in terms of variety than this. Also, another thing I'm seeing is the size. If you think you've drawn them too big, they are probably not big enough. Hobie has a lot of fucking hair, okay? Like, a lot of hair. So where I'm seeing this, it should look more like this. He has a lot of fucking hair. My last beef with y'all, I promise, is the texture. If I'm not seeing this, I'm seeing this. And, and that's just not how wigs work. That is just an afro. Oh, also one last thing, which is just like not really a big thing. And I've only seen it a couple times, but still I've seen it a couple times. His hair don't go down. It's not straight hair. Wigs and like certain black hairstyles defy gravity. That shit is going up and every which way, okay? I've seen a lot of people draw his hair like straight down locks. I'm like, ooh, that's, that's just not how that works. And I'd like to note, I've been doing locks for six years. So that's what makes me a little bit more picky about this stuff. And you are not obligated in any way to follow my advice. But to my Spider-Verse artists, if you want black people to look at your art and go, damn, like that's a really good job, follow the tips. If you want to get better at drawing black hair, follow the tips. And honestly, the reason I even felt obligated to do this is because I watched a really popular like art tutorial account give a Wix tutorial for Hobie the other day. And it was not, yeah. But hey, who am I? Hope this helped. Good luck and Godspeed. So let's get into it.
I'd also like to preface by saying this is specifically a tutorial for Hobie Brown's hair. If you want to add this type of hairstyle to your OCs and you want to draw their own wigs, because not all wigs look alike, I suggest Googling wigs or Googling freeform wigs and using references because again, it doesn't matter how many times I give you a tutorial or tell you how to do it, references are key. Anyway, let's get into it. Freeforms are the process of leaving your hair alone. You need like minor upkeep for freeforms. I see a lot of people in my comment section saying, oh my God, I never knew what wigs were. I don't know what freeforms are. You didn't know what they were called. You've definitely seen them. Here's J. Cole with freeforms. Here's J. Cole again with longer freeforms. And actually his hair is kind of wicking up in the back. Here's Jay-Z with freeform wigs. And here's Kodak Black with wigs. But y'all, what's the difference between a lock and a wig? Just the size, that's it. What exactly marks the size difference? I don't know, it's different for everybody. Some people say they have really thick locks. Some people will say, oh, I have wicks. At a certain point when they get so big, everybody's calling them wicks. But you know, towards the middle, mm, it's really up to the person what they want to call them. Hobie has free forms. Why does this matter? It speaks to his character. Wicks are black hair in its most natural state. Untouched, unteased, unbothered. Like Hobie. They also require little to no upkeep. They are also a testimony to black resilience as there is many historic examples of wicks in Africa before the slave trade. And again, as I said, they represent our hair in its most natural state untouched now moving on because if we get into that this video will be way too long now let's give him permission to use a couple of pieces in this little tutorial remember this is in the name of progressive critique not criticism there's a difference this is the artist who sent me her work in her original piece you can see a couple of the points i talked about yesterday with the consistency in the sizing and the shape of the wigs and then this is the version she touched up after watching my tutorial you can see it still has that like style that she has just with the extra variation this is proof you can keep your style while drawing black people accurately that's a great example of that now these are actually notes i gave someone i'm not using their art but this is why references are so important because this is a shape i took from their drawing of hobie and then compared it to this shape right here when we talk about weight in art we're essentially talking about how you depict the function of gravity now i did say some black hairstyles defy gravity and they do because here you can see that outside of this frame his hair continues upwards and they only start bending downward when they disconnect from the hair at the root. Because the way to tell freeforms from regular locks is that they will usually be all connected at the root of the hair. That minor upkeep I was talking about is people will usually keep parting the root of their hair so that the freeforms can continue in individual shape instead of growing out as one entity. For example, here's my little brother's hair. This is when he had freeforms and you can see it all grows out of the root of his hair after he stopped separating these individual pieces. This is after I re-separated them to give him Locks. And you can assume that root of his hair ends where these shapes begin to bend. And I'll cover weight more and texture in the next video. Part two of how to draw Hobie Brown's wig. Last video we were talking about weight and we're going to continue that conversation. So yes, wigs are heavy so they do start to bend when they disconnect from the root of the hair which would be around here. However, because they're so large that's why you still see this overlap and very minimal gapping. And when I say gapping I see these like little spaces right here and right here where they don't quite connect or overlap. Which is another thing I see where people will draw his wicks with a lot of gapping between them and a lot of space. It is okay that they touch. In fact, it is more likely that they will touch because they're so large. They aren't propelling themselves away from each other like magnets. Also consider size when you consider weight. Like you see this little tiny piece right here. It's kind of sticking upward because the base is much larger than the end of this little piece. Versus this piece right here where you can see like the head of this wick is very much larger in circumference than the base of it. Therefore, the this part is going to fall over because of gravity. It's like trying to balance a basketball on a stick. It's going to lean over. Another common thing I see is this shape right here, which is actually more similar to an afro when you fully complete it. And I'll give you an example. I'm seeing a lot of shapes that look just like this. You really want to exaggerate these forms and give them like distinct shapes because that is where you get the distinction between afro and wicks. So let's say you do have a piece like this. You don't even necessarily have to erase everything. Theoretically, you could just accentuate the forms that you already have and take these pieces here and just make them larger. Obviously while looking at a reference because I'm not right now and I know this probably looks nothing like his hair. 
But you see how just with a little bit of exaggeration in the form, this looks vastly different than this. And you can clearly tell these are wicks versus this being a borderline afro. Now for the next most important thing people are asking me about, which is texture. You'll notice that in the movie, Hobie's hair doesn't really have any texture. He kind of just has this outline that gives us the illusion of texture at some points in the film, depending on how it looks. Because here it looks a lot more flatly colored and here it gives us the illusion of like that coily afro texture. Now if texture is really important to your style, I would play around with brushes until you find one that fits your style but also looks like 4C hair. Because remember with wicks, the hair is kind of packed in really tight so you don't get a lot of that like fluffy afro kind of texture of hair. But you still want to give it some dimension so it doesn't look like literal like flat paper. So I would say play around with different sketchy type of brushes to give different highlights and shadow. You know, things of that nature. But again, not every brush will work for everyone's style. If you like this, this is like my style. This is the brush that I use. And then we're going to tackle one last thing in a very short ending video to this. It's the ringlets. The treaded ringlets. Okay, and this is hopefully the last part in how to draw Hobie's wicks. In the last video, I said we were only tackling the ringlets in this video, but then I remembered another offense. I talked about them in the caption of the last video, but the dreaded puffs. Wicks is just hair that is tightly packed together in this small little space. So what you do when you're drawing them like this is implying a looseness of the hair that would not exist with locks or wicks. A fully formed lock is this shape. My hair still has this texture because my locks are not fully formed and I started them with two strand twists. So they still have the texture of two strand twists. This is my little brother's hair and you see how his locks have that texture? That's because they are twisted out. You see how the edges of these wicks aren't textured? That's because the hair is just packed tight together. But Joe, how do I fix this without starting all over? Simply solidify whatever shapes you already have. If they're following the rules that we already talked about with weight, variety, and shaping. And boom, they look more like wicks already. And lastly, the one I've seen the most, the one that gets me the most tight. I know y'all watch Steven Universe because y'all drawing this lady's hair, bro. This how y'all got my dog looking, bro. Like, what is going on? Why does this one get me the most tight? Because it's not even an attempt at a lock. That's a full-on ringlet. That's not even like that. <laughs> And I get it, some people don't know what a wick is. They've literally never seen a wick before in their life. So they're just looking and assuming based off what they see and making a connection to the only thing that they know. But if you're drawing it as a ringlet, please go back and watch all of my tutorials. I think this is like number four. It will help you immensely. Just Google what hairstyle does Hobie Brown have. As someone who's been doing locks for so long, seeing y'all draw them as coils hurts my soul or ringlets, whatever. And a lot of y'all were asking me how I draw his wicks in my style. I have not drawn Hobie in my style yet. I'm still doing screen studies and art studies of a lot of the Spider-Verse clips that I can find online. So yeah, that photo that I've been using as a reference, that's basically what I'm using also for a screen study. And then I'm getting the art book on July 3rd and then I'll probably start doing him in my style because I have a lot more references to work with. Because you're not going to catch me drawing a bumblebee without a reference. So you've never seen wigs before and you want to know what is the texture of Hobie's hair? If you want to send me your art on Instagram, I suggest you go back through the tutorials that I made and compare your work to the notes that I gave. Because everyone who sent me a piece, it's either been perfect or they needed one of the notes that I gave in my tutorial. Also one of my mutuals suggested a Patreon because these in-depth tutorials like this do take a lot of time and energy. And the one-on-ones also. I will make a Patreon later. It'll be like a dollar. I don't know. But moving on. We went over this a little bit yesterday. But again, wicks are just really thick locks. And honestly, if you're looking at a real reference, most locks don't even have that shape that most people do where they do these little circle-ish highlights around it like this. I do understand that this is usually an attempt at making highlights in the hair. And if you're going for a more cartoon style, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But because wicks are so large, it can easily get lost in translation and start looking like a ringlet instead of a wig. Also, wicks are formed differently. The reason you'll see people do like those circular rings around locks is because you roll locks to form them. So it's true. At certain stages in the locking process, before it's like fully locked, your hair is literally rolling around itself. So it does actually take that shape at some stage. But with wicks, it's literally just the hair matting together. You aren't like palm rolling it or rolling it in any way to turn it into that shape. It just grows like that. Again, I'm seeing a lot of this. If you're using this shape to make a wick, I would suggest staying away from that. Also, if you want to highlight it, I would refrain from doing this as well. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Like you see how that shape is different from that shape and that texture. Certain shapes imply different forms. So when you do spirals like these, it implies a looser form and wicks are very, very tightly packed together. Like they're extremely dense. So 
so where normally when we draw hair, we go in and we do all these little intricate highlights and shadows to show the layering and different shapes within the hair. Because wicks are so dense, they are truly just one shape and they could be shaded similarly to like a baseball bat. That is one solid form that we don't add intricate like internal highlights to because it is one solid form. And then another thing, this is one of those loose forms that I was talking about that implies that the hair is not packed in together. So like I've said in all of these videos, I suggest looking at people who have actual wigs and understanding the form and the shape that they take. And I know I sound like a broken record, but again, wigs are tight. Especially Hobie's because if they were loose, they would fall. But his hair sticks out at an angle at most points in his head. And then the points that bend are heavy enough to bend. Loose and fluffy texture and wicks are like oil and water. They don't go. Yeah, most of the remaining questions I saw were about texture, so I hope this helped. I made like five or six videos about this and still forgot to tell y'all one thing. When I said in that video that Hobie has a lot of hair, that didn't mean that Hobie has a lot of pieces of hair. He just has very thick hair. Hobie has like 12 wigs, maybe even less. Like that's that's another thing if you're looking at your Hobie art and you're like something feels off. I see a lot of people give him like, I don't know, 20, 30 pieces of hair. That can make it look more like locks than wigs. Because think about it, if you make very large braids in your head, you won't have a whole bunch of braids. Or like whatever you do with your head, if you do it in large sections, there won't be many sections. So because these sections of his hair are so large, there's not going to be like 40 of them. It makes it look like really crammed in and really like crowded. And people were sending me their pieces and being like, yeah, like I follow your tips. Something still feels off. Like, can you let me know? Nine times out of 10, that's what feels off. From the side, you're going to see less pieces of hair. From the front, you're going to see probably all whatever pieces of hair he has. So yeah, like think of wicks in terms of like big huge sections and there's not that many lots of volumes in terms of size less volume in terms of number of pieces hope this helped anyone who was still wondering and yeah that's really all i had to say but before i go i got one more message watch lil bill's video about the black history behind punk rock because we made this shit and y'all niggas are just copying like shit i'm sorry i don't know what to tell y'all but like you're just following behind the coattails of black people, and that's not even just with punk rock music. Y'all been doing that with goddamn. <laughs> Y'all been doing that with everything. Like it's not, it's it's really not funny, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, bye.